Elon Musk's Neuralink has just dropped a huge announcement about the details of their first ever human trial for their revolutionary brain implant device and revealed who the first Neuralink users will be. In a recent announcement, Neuralink has confirmed that they are actively recruiting the first human test subjects for their N1 brain computer interface device and R1 surgical robot procedure. The company revealed that an independent institutional review board has granted them full approval to begin the process of selecting their first ever human patients for a clinical trial which is now known as the PRIME study, short for Precise Robotically Implanted Brain Computer Interface. This will be a groundbreaking investigational medical device trial of Neuralink's fully implantable wireless brain-computer interface, and it's expected that the first human trial will take up to six years for Neuralink to complete and verify their findings. The primary study period will take place over the first 18 months after the device has been implanted. Patients will check in with a medical team every two months to monitor progress and ensure the Neuralink device continues to work as intended. One-hour BCI research sessions with the Neuralink team will be completed at least two times per week for every patient for the duration of the 18-month primary study. The long-term follow-up phase of the trial begins immediately after the primary study and will continue with four clinical visits per year over the course of the next five years. The aim of the PRIME study will be to evaluate the safety of both the N1 implant and R1 surgical robot, then assess the initial functionality of the Neuralink technology for enabling people with full body paralysis to control external devices with their thoughts. One of the most fascinating aspects of this study will be the first use of the Neuralink R1 robot on a human patient. The R1 is a sewing machine-like device that places the N1 implants ultra-fine and flexible threads into the motor cortex of the brain. This is the area that controls your intention of movement. Each patient in the study group, which will likely be around 10 people at most, probably less, will have a flap of skin cut away from their skull by a human surgeon who will then use a cutting tool to remove a circular section of the skull just large enough to fit the Neuralink device. From there, the surgeon may or may not also remove the layer of soft tissue that separates the brain from the skull. This is known as the dura. And Neuralink has said in the past that early versions of their procedure have not been able to penetrate through the dura layer, and that necessitates the removal. But future updates to the procedure will allow the protective dura to stay in place, and the threads of the Neuralink device will penetrate through the layer as well. At this point, the Neuralink will use an advanced targeting computer to place a total of 64 electrode threads directly into the outer layer of the brain, penetrating only a couple of millimeters deep. This will be done with a level of precision that avoids any rupture of the blood vessels that flow through the brain tissue. Once the threads are inserted, the N1 device is placed inside the void of the skull, and the skin flap is replaced and sewn shut. The first-of-its-kind surgical procedure will allow the N1 implant to be cosmetically invisible underneath the patient's skin while still being able to transmit and record brain signals wirelessly through Bluetooth connection to Neuralink's own smartphone app that will decode the movement intention from the cortex and translate it into computer input commands. The initial goal of the PRIME study is to grant people the ability to control a computer cursor and keyboard using their thoughts alone. Neuralink founder Elon Musk was quick to promote the Neuralink trial on his social media platform now known as X. Elon wrote, The first human patient will soon receive a Neuralink device. This ultimately has the potential to restore full body movement. Musk also sees the opportunity to remind people that his long-term goal with Neuralink has always been and continues to be a device that will bridge the gap between the human brain and artificial general intelligence. Elon wrote, In the long term, Neuralink hopes to play a role in AI risk civilization risk reduction by improving human-to-AI and human-to-human -human bandwidth by several orders of magnitude. Now, that sounds a bit crazy, but what he means is that a device like Neuralink can eliminate the input lag between human thought and computer action. So, imagine a point in the future where we have created the first ever thinking machine, a super intelligent computer that can process terabytes worth of information in a single second. 
how could a human being possibly keep up with something like that? Typing into a keyboard would not be anywhere near fast enough, even spoken language wouldn't be enough. We would need a direct and instantaneous high bandwidth connection between the human mind and the AI. Otherwise, it will probably get bored of us pretty quickly, and then we end up living out the plot of Terminator or The Matrix. Anyway, Elon concluded his thought by saying, imagine if Stephen Hawking had this. And that's really getting back towards the most practical application here. Even with a significant limitation on his ability to communicate, Stephen Hawking continued to be regarded as one of the most important minds in human history, and he was massively influential to the field of theoretical physics and cosmology. Now just imagine if we could have removed that limitation on his ability to communicate the ideas in his brain to the wider world. Just think about everything that tends to get lost when we try to communicate our thoughts, ideas, and feelings into conventional language, and imagine the power of the human mind if you could remove that filter entirely. This is something that Neuralink can achieve, and it can do much more. Elon Musk followed up to include his theory that a Neuralink implant can be used in combination with the humanoid robotic technology that Tesla is developing for their Optimus robot. Elon gave the specific example of Luke Skywalker. At the end of Empire Strikes Back, Luke is fitted with a robotic hand that functions identically to the one that was chopped off by Darth Vader. Neuralink technology could be used to bridge the physical gap between man and machine, allowing people to transcend the human condition and the frailties of the biological form. In their announcement, Neuralink states that they are specifically looking for trial subjects who suffer from quadriplegia due to a cervical spinal cord injury or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. These would be people who have little to no control over any body movement from the neck down. Typically, the only way that patients in this condition can use an electrical device like a computer is with a specialty hardware like a head mouse which is a camera system that tracks the movement of a person's forehead and translates it into a movement on a cursor on a computer screen. Eye tracking systems can also be used to similar effect, but they're very expensive, usually running between seven and $17,000. On the lower end of the price scale, there are tongue operated computer mouse options for people living with ALS. Obviously, None of these options are ideal, and they're also not capable of granting the patient full control over any electronic device in the same way that an able-bodied person would. Neuralink has the potential to offer a complete solution to this one very significant problem. Neuralink will not heal a spinal cord injury, and it will not reverse the degenerative effect of ALS, but it can help people to live a more dignified and fulfilling life through an enhanced ability to communicate with the outside world. This is something that Neuralink has already shown through their trials with the macaque monkeys. If a monkey can use their Neuralink to play Pong, then there's no reason to think that a human being could not use that same technology to fully control a computer. And this is only the beginning. Elon Musk has long believed that Neuralink can reverse the effects of a spinal cord injury, and he's gone as far as to theorize that Neuralink technology could reverse the degenerative effects of a brain disease like ALS, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, or even Alzheimer's. Now, to be clear, these are much more speculative claims. The biggest problem we face is that even our top scientists do not fully know what even causes many of these diseases, let alone how we might ever be able to correct them. But this is the kind of study that Neuralink might be able to pursue in the future if they are successful in their first clinical trial. For anyone who thinks they might qualify for a Neuralink trial, there is a patient registry that you can join. This is for both current and future clinical trials. Neuralink uses their patient registry to understand the needs of a larger and more diverse group of individuals with various disability conditions. The registry is open to anyone within the United States who is at least 18 years of age and suffers from quadriplegia, paraplegia, vision loss, hearing loss, the inability to speak, or major limb amputation. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. 
You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.